So, okay, so tonight um, is the first meetup for the quarter uh, for Q2 uh, for the program of banking community. And our normal cadence is that means that the first meetup of the quarter, we normally focus on our roadmap. Um, so Investec is gonna tell us a little bit about what they've been up to, what's on the roadmap for the next quarter. Um, and then the theme for the quarter is around pro programmable banking cards. Um, so you're going to see there's quite a lot of community stuff happening around the pro bank programmable banking cards as well. Um, so I just want to remind everyone as well that tonight is your meetup. So I don't want to be the only one talking. So feel free to ask questions, either to shout out loud or put your questions in the, the Zoom chat as well. Um, okay, do you want to go on, Nick? Okay, so give, just to give you guys a little overview of what we're going to go through tonight. Um, so this is me talking now for the little welcome and the intro to give you a heads up on what's happening. Um, we have two community members who've also very kindly volunteered to demo for us. So Fricky is going to be taking us through his effortless bill splitting solution that he's been working on for a while. Um, then Wayne is going to take us through the technical roadmap for Q2 and what Investec has lined up there. Um, and then Pavendran is going to give us a talk on PayShap, uh, the new payment rails. And then finally, we'll go through a few updates from what we've been doing in the community. Okay, so Fricky, I'm going to hand over to you. All right, great. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Arieta. So um, hi, everyone. I'm Fricky. I've been uh, a community member for the, I guess, the past two-ish years um on and off mostly so uh so there's times where i'm where i'm active and times where i'm not uh recently i've been a bit more active again um so yeah i quickly want to want to show you what i've built um recently um so i wanted you see to to split it um so basically what i'm addressing here is is easy repayments um so this is all based on this idea of like you know asking people to pay you back after you've like gone out for coffee or whatever that kind of becomes awkward um and it also becomes a mission like if uh like I've, I've been cycling with a group of like eight people and then the waiter has to go around and you know tap everyone's card and, uh, and that gets uh, that's also that's also quite annoying so the idea here is to kind of address that where basically one person pays and uh they just send a link to everyone else and, and they can pay uh they can pay them back um and also, I've I've recently asked, I've gotten this feeling that, uh, and this of course excludes uh, the Investic app, but the rest of the banking apps are quite clunky, and uh, and the tech is quite fragmented. So, uh, so for example, if I need to help my mother-in-law make a make an EFT, then uh, I don't know how AppSauce banking app works, and uh, and you know trying to address this fragmentation by providing kind of a unified solution in that regard. Um, to build this, um, this is actually the interesting bit is uh, this is all built on Svelte Kit. Um, so it's pretty, I think in December they launched version one. So I was actually checking out Svelte Kit and then um, I ended up building this. So uh, this is also maybe a nice testament for if you're playing around with new tech, what you might end up with. Um, then I'm also integrating with Fioco and then of course uh, the Investec API. Um, so if we can go to the next screen slide. Um, so I'm going to do a live demo. So please, uh, please send me your thoughts and prayers. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I um, love demo, Fricky. Uh, <laughs> right, let me just get your faces up here again. Right, so just uh, I have to ask everyone can see a browser showing split it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. So this is uh, this is splitit.com. Um, if you don't get it, uh, it's basically based on split it. So hey, let's let's just split it. Um, so that's that's the idea behind the name. Um, and essentially, like once you've uh, once you've signed up, uh, you end up on like this kind of uh, dashboard where you can make payment requests. Uh, and of course, yeah, there we go. Um, and now let's say. Nick and myself have gone out. We've had a nice cup of coffee. Uh, I'm going to ask him to pay me ten rand for that uh, for that coffee of uh, this afternoon. And then here yeah, I can upload the receipt if I so wish. And then I simply just create the payment request. And this takes me to a page where I can then uh, send this to Nick. So what you are not seeing now is I've just sent this link to Nick 
um, in the in Slack. But what I want to show you while this is uh, while Nick is paying me back is uh, another payment request that I've that I've recently done with some friends uh, just to see what it will look like. Um, as you can see here, that you've got your that you've got your receipt that you've uploaded, and uh, everyone has kindly paid me back uh, for all of that. So uh, that's that's really basically it from from this point of view. Uh, what the payment screen itself also looks like. So what so what Nick is is seeing right now uh, is this screen. So basically, here you just get to enter your card details, and then once you hit the pay button, that money is taken from your from your credit card and put into my uh, my invest investing business account. So uh, Nick is giving me the thumbs up. So I assume that means it's all good. So Fricky, right now, can you only pay with card? You can't scan the code. With yes. Like scan. Yeah. So at the moment, you can only pay with cards. I mean, this is where the Yoko integration actually is. Um, so Yoko is handling my payments right here. Um, in the future, I'm well, like, I'll get to that in a bit. But I'm I'm planning to also uh, make this into a bit of a a payment provider itself, uh, so that uh, I don't have to pay all that fees to Yoko. Um, so then here you can see, uh, so this is my, my admin dashboard. So here you can see the, the 10 rand that, uh, that Nick paid out to me. And this is where the Investig API starts, uh, starts kicking in. So this page uh, basically shows you what uh, my bank details is. So unfortunately, I'm having to use Bank Zero here because uh, for my own accounts, uh, there's some errors doing EFTs from, from my own business accounts, my personal account. So uh, Bank Zero works here as uh, for the meanwhile. And um, basically here, I, I check if the beneficiary exists. If it does, uh, then I'm able to make this payment. And so hitting this button is now actually triggering the, the payment uh, API endpoint, and then uh, that's all done. Um, so yeah, this part will eventually become automated. Um, right now I'm doing it all manually because I don't, uh, I don't want to end up uh, accidentally you know, transferring in a for loop, which uh, which bankrupts me or something. But um, yeah, um, that's it for the live demo. Yeah, uh, I so can share can, screen now. Yes, we can put the slides back on. Finally, authorization. Yeah. You guys can see that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, very simple, uh, simple app um, or very simple website at this point. Um, so as for for next steps, is uh, I'm I'm planning on building an app. Um, because the initial feedback that I've gotten is everyone seems to want an app. So that was, that was an interesting learning for myself so far. Um, and then secondly, uh, at this point, it's, it's only costing me a lot of money. So, uh, I have to, have to pay the, the credit card fees, fees to Yoko. And then of course, also the EFT fees from, from Investec. But, uh, so my next point is to try and, and build something that that I can have some use case for, uh, for becoming a payment provider with using uh, with using the API as well, and then lastly, also also trying to get some funding. So uh, right now, this is this is just a side project. Um, I'm I'm trying to to pitch the idea somewhere to to get some funding. So if any of you know uh, know of keen people looking to invest in in this obviously great time for investments, then let me know. Um, and then of course the last next step is to get all of you to sign up to Splitter.com um, and to test it out. Uh, so it's it's still super early stages. Um, I'd love to get feedback, um, and I'd love to get people to use it. Um, I think it's very it's a very convenient tool, and so far, the cases where I've used it have been uh, have been quite uh, have been quite a fun experience. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it from my side. Does any anyone questions? have any questions? Yeah. I have a question. Um, it looks like you need a resource uh, that investor could, uh, program or banking could at least provide, which would be a sandbox of having a single account, but being able to move money around to simulate transactions so that there's no cost uh, or fees while you're developing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 
I guess that would be convenient. Um, I've just mocked the API response from from Investec to to do the uh, to do development, so it wasn't. Uh, um, well, it's not a major blocker, but yeah, I agree. It would be a would be a nice uh, improvement. Just for the development sandbox environments, it would be very useful for others, yep. not just your application. Yes. Um, when are you adding that to the slides for today now quickly <laughs> i paid him money so he can set it up so i can start with a sandbox okay <laughs> are there any other questions for fricky um i'm a bit confused where does investic api get used in that thing because you're like oh you're not really yeah busy. sorry um i do so uh, sorry i went maybe a bit quickly but um by the point where the money is uh, deposited into the Investec uh, account, that's what I use to perform payouts uh, to the receiving user. Um, so the, the user who signs up have to link their bank account details. Um, so you're linking your, your personal bank account details. And once you're generating payment links um, and receiving payments from that link, um, I'm using the Investec API to then perform the payouts to that bank account that you've linked. Okay. Okay, yes. uh, that's really cool. I like things that are simple and that like it was so easy and simple to use. So I really think it's cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I have a question. You you using Yoko, right? Have you are you aware of the um, Yoko instant payment links or something like that? I think it's called something like that. They allow you yes. to basically generate a, a link to get pay, paid. Maybe you could integrate with that. Um, yes, I know about this. Um, that requires you to be a business, though. Um, so oh, they're not okay. providing it. They're not providing it for just normal people. Maybe Investec should provide that to normal people. Hint, hint. No, <laughs> you split it. <laughs> Aretha quickly updates wait slides. Yeah. Are there any other questions for Fricky before we move on? Okay. A question from my side, uh, Fricky, do you then manually go and add the beneficiary to um, to that business account so that you can do the payouts? Yeah, so okay. um, I think you saw the, the the feature request coming in this week, but uh, yeah. Yeah, at the moment I have to manually add those uh, beneficiaries for the first payout. Uh, but once that is done, then uh, the rest can get automated. I see you've got the horrible Fika statement to deal with. Yes. Um, so of course you need to. Uh, uh, I think it's law. So you need to you need to be dealing with Fika. Uh, so once you once a person signs up, they're only able to receive money once I've been able to uh, successfully Fika you. Mm. Okay. So you're having to ask for all the KYC documents at this point. Okay, that's not fun. That's what it is. Okay. Is it because you're holding on to money for a period while you do the transfer out? Um, well, I try to do the transfer as quickly as possible, but um, I think it's regardless of, of whether you are holding money or not. It's uh, as soon as you have or are doing business uh, that is susceptible to people, you know, trying to commit fraud or whatever. Uh, um, there is onus on you as a business to to have your well, users be cut. Um, so at this point, I'm actually holding on to the money until a user uh, successfully peak us. Um, so you can still actually use Splurred, um, but I, I'm not paying you out until until you've uh, uploaded all of your supporting documents. Okay. Okay. It's interesting. Yes. Okay. Wayne, we hand over to you. Okay, next. <laughs> um, so it's not the most exciting roadmap ever, but let's just go through it and we'll see if there's any questions. Um, so first of all, uh, we've heard you after many years of complaining that there's no sandbox. So we've actually went and built a sandbox for private bank. And I think we're almost done with the sandbox for ICRB, which is our corporate side of the business, so business banking. Um, so that should be quite useful 
for a couple of people, for businesses that want to start using the API, but are still waiting for their accounts to be activated, they can at least start having. And for people that don't have Investec accounts that used to use that Investec Make account, they can now build stuff against the sandbox. The, the mechanism is quite simple. It's a different set of credentials, basically. If you log in, it gives you a set of mock data back, so you can play around with that stuff. The documentation for the private bank one has been updated, so anybody can use it. The ICIB one, I think, is coming soon. You mm -hmm. can tell us. What might be live? I know he's busy with it. And Wayne, how can I see, does the functionality sure. of the sandbox match the actual API? Like, is all the functionality in there, or are there, is anything missing? Um, For Price Bank, it's, it's all there. everything's there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously the card endpoints, not yet, that's separate. But for Price Bank, the accounts, transfers, payments, everything's there. And then, yeah, awesome. CRB, we're just trying to get data, proper test data. Uh, but the rest is all is all almost there. Cool. Cool. So hopefully, like that, will uh, we think that's a very important thing now. That should help a lot of people get going. Okay. Next was self enrollment. So um, I don't know if you any of you joined. When you joined, the process generally was you ask a banker to activate you for primary banking. They either know what you're talking about or not. Somehow through the process, you end up being activated and then you can use it. We've automated all of that. So basically anybody can now go. If you want access to parallel banking, it's almost live. Like it's, we're just waiting for it. We're in a, like a lot change freeze for the end of the month. So hopefully coming out of change freeze, it should go in. Um, basically you can just go in and click on a button and it activates you for programmable, programmable banking. So we were sort of leaving the beta phase. We were in that beta mindset for couple of years now we're saying this is more mainstream there's no more beta just log in um i'm ready for shelf enrollment <laughs> yeah um so you can just basically go and do it yourself so no more asking your banker who sometimes didn't understand what you were asking all of that stuff um a lot of the work um, around the low code stuff where well, you know we started last year to say like there's probably three different use cases of how you want to interact with um in with a api one is you're a hardcore techie you like the raw api you want to use it that way the other one is you're semi-technical which means you probably won't do all of that but you still want to use the api and the other one is like you have limited technical skills you want to use it so we're trying to cater for all three um client base basically um so spreadsheet banking, as you know, was our main spearhead project on that one. Uh, we are now testing it with clients. Uh, we've got some good feedback. We're busy fixing that stuff. So that one is quite exciting and good going. Um, the other one, Spendco, um, we're using internally at Investec. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. It's the tool that lets you swap your card. It sends you like a message. You categorize it, and that integrates into your payment system. Um, so platform 45 built it and we're busy rolling it out. So we're seeing some nice traction on the not so hardcore stuff, the more low code, no code type of solutions. Okay. Um, then off the back of our, our developer portal, which we're still tweaking and, and manipulating and get making better with Devin and feedback from the community. Um, we've also went and built the internal dev portals, you know, inside of Investec. Sorry, just give me one second. Okay, hey, multitasking. Um, <laughs> my Uber Eats is here for the children. Uh, where was I? Internet Dev Portal. So, um, like the the internal like employees of Investec, they obviously talk to each other using APIs a lot. We saw the value that the Dev Portal added, and we created a a version of that for the internal people. We're testing it. There's been really good reception around it. So basically, if you rack like about um, Hey, stop distracting me. <laughs> so, so if you interacting as private bank with the payment systems, whatever, we're hoping to make the experience very similar to the external dev portal where it's like nice, you can go there, you can see the documentation, you can use it. Um, and we'll keep on evolving that as we do the external dev portal. There's a lot of changes 
we've worked on with Devin and the team to identify all the changes and a reason around looking at a, a developer journey from start to end, not just their portal, like the whole experience. And we're going through a process of, of putting that in as well in the next while. It's not top priority, but when we get um, the opportunities, we'll definitely be doing an answer thing. We want to end up with like the best dev experience in the world. That's our goal. So it's not there yet, but we're getting there. Okay. That's a great um, goal. Virtual course, I've been saying it's coming for a while. We now have like, I asked this week, it's been delayed. They have like issues, 48 bucks, blah, 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 stories. So it might come, might not come. It's not up to us really. It's up to the team that's building it. We thought they were very close and then they weren't so close. And also I'm like a bit confused, but it's definitely a project and it's definitely coming. So it's not like theoretical. It's just now getting through their user testing, bug fixes, all of that stuff. Um, then a lot of other work that we've been doing on was looking at ERP integrations. When we started, we didn't really know like what would be the main use cases for API integration in businesses. It ended up being people want their stuff in ERP systems. So we're building, we, we built the integration into Sage, Zero, and QuickBooks with FinsUp and the Delta. Um, we're taking that tool and bedding it back into Investec to like make it more standardized with the rest of the infrastructure. So there's a lot of work happening around making sure that as Investec, if you have a business, our ERP integrations are working, they're smooth, they're running nicely. So it's, it's really, it's not that important for an individual, but if you're a business, it's critically important that those feeds work 100% constantly. And then the last thing, any and the team, I've been working on stats and reporting up to now. It's been a bit of a bugbear. Like we we don't really know who was using the API, who's the top user, who's like all of those things. Any and them went and built us some very nice Power BI dashboards. And so now we're watching all of you. We can see who's who's using it, who's not using it, the response times, who's getting bad stuff. So um, it's really nice from for our point of view to finally be able to have some visibility into. We could get some basic stats. This is much more granular. It's just like saying. Um, who are the people in private bank? What's happening over that screen? Anyway, the people in private bank, who's the top users? And then we can contact them, see if they're getting stuck, whatever. So if, you, if, you're, if you're using the API a lot and you seem to be stuck, we can have visibility on it and we can actually jump in and see if there's something we can do to assist, which is very nice for us. Also, internal stakeholders have been complaining about our stealth project we've been running for the last three years. This gives them very nice visibility into... These are the number of clients on board. This is what they're doing, all of that stuff. So um, so this is sort of a mixture of what we've done, what we're busy with. Like the stats thing, we're still going to work on all of that. So I hope that gives you a feel for what's coming and what we're working on right now. Not necessarily a roadmap. So if you're expecting more features to come out of the API, it's probably unlikely. We, we think we've probably, if you look at raw APIs, the use case is probably limited, like get my transactions to do payments. So we're focusing on getting those working 100% instead of adding gimmicky features on the site. Mm -hmm. If there is something that the community thinks like this is really not gimmicky, this is like super important, please let us know. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be rolling out more features. We'd probably get the stuff that's there to be super optimal and mm -hmm. easy to use. So that would be my question, Wayne. Are you guys also working? I know there have been quite a lot of feature requests around the payments API, the beneficial yes. payments API about increasing the limits and a lot of different things. Are those also on your roadmap you worked on? That's this all the stuff we work on is payments. Like we did a review of security to make sure that it's in line with like the right stuff. So when payments come, we can do that. We're looking at different ways of authorizing different people to do payments. Like, so if I have a, a login, and I don't want it to be more than a thousand rand payment. How do we go about that? Well, if another guy in my business can do hundred thousand, how do we allow that? So it's different mechanisms we're trying to figure out. So payments is a big focus, and getting ERP integrations basically transaction history into a into another system. So it's those the transaction history integration and payments. That's our two main focuses now. If you ask anybody for what do they want, it's typically transaction history and payments. There's very little that anybody else needs. To do a nice bank integration. I think uh, when <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's worth mentioning uh, and whether it falls into the group, but the obviously we, on the current stuff like PB, we're not 
there's a lot of a lot of new features but on the other thing <laughs> so like the other business units i mean there's a lot of new features coming there but the, i mean that's outside of the scope of pb <clears throat> but there are a whole bunch of new stuff coming from the other units like ccm and, and those oh, yeah, Han, you're talking in like code language. We don't know what CCM is or. Uh, so corporate cash management. So uh, the intermediary side of Investec. Okay. Yeah. So it would be similar functionality, but for different business units. So if, yeah. if you're like a lawyer. Across the bank, basically. Yeah. And you're sitting on, on clients' money because you're waiting either for documentation or whatever. They put it typically in a CCM account, which is a corporate cash management account. It's like a treasury account just sits there um people wanted access to those accounts you see their transactions and potentially do payments so we're busy with that they, we've we've launched a to your point we've launched a way that if you are a client of our fx business and you want to do the the balance of payment forms you can now submit the balance of payment forms online through the api which makes it a lot easier because normally it's like some stupid pdf you have to fill in so lots of that stuff also happening i'm not sure if the community if we should bring that to the community, potentially, uh, I'll leave it up to you. It's not something guess, individual would typically use. I guess, but the, the nice thing is when we look at the intermediary business and all the work that we're doing, we are sort of, I guess, testing some of our thinking in, in those areas, which it does help for things like payments, which is always fun. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for Wayne? Now's your chance to grill him on what you want. What did you get for dinner, Wayne, from Uber Eats? Um, it's fish night, fish away. I have to give the children fish at least once a week, otherwise they get all scurvy. <laughs> and... I'm kidding. <laughs> um, the stockbroking account thing, they said, like our wealth business doesn't have it prioritized. It's not important for them, but we did end up building something. So they... There is potentially endpoint sitting there that exposes your stockbroking portfolio. So you could go in, see all your shares, all of that stuff. What we need to do is convince the wealth business to make it live so that they can do it. But it's not that critical for them to do it. So we, we're going to campaign to try and say, it's really nice. There's an ask from the community. Please bring it or let us go live with it because we can't just go live. They obviously have to support it. If the shares are wrong or something, you know, they don't want to end up in a situation where like we're showing stuff we shouldn't. So, so it's Kumi built it with the hackathon team. It's there, which is they can't go live yet because we need their shine off. But it's not how important for that business. But if if there's if you have a very valid use case and you want us to do it, like just nag us like a client would, and then we can go and say our clients are asking for this. That gives us some level of momentum to to get it prioritized. Like if nobody wants it, then then we're going to do it. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure you. Yes. Does anybody else have any questions for Wayne? Uh. Otherwise, what I will tell you is if you do want things prioritized and you do want Wayne to be talking about them inside Investec, we have a programmable banking community canny board where we're capturing all the feature requests. So if there's something on the beneficiary payments API that you need for your business, Ricky, um, put it up here. I know you've done that for me. And then if other people like what they see, you can upvote those features. And then Wayne will consider them when he's planning his roadmap and use this as collateral to go internally and tell people that people want more features. Yeah, it really helps. If we can get a bunch of clients wanting stuff, it, it gives us some leverage to do it. Otherwise, they think we're just like making clever things and nobody wants it. Can I register multiple accounts and upload all of my feature requests? You can if you want to kill their can their board, then map it's not my board. <laughs> you use your own account and you'll log it. <laughs> um okay, so Nick has planned a fun little mental break for us. Um so your job is to go to Slack and you need to try to guess if you can tell what these tech concepts or tools are that he's represented by these emojis. Um, and the answers will be posted after the meetup. So it's a chance just to relax, engage a little, and test your knowledge. So Nick will also post this picture on Slack so you can see it there. Um, 
And you can have a look while I hand over to Pravendran. But Pravendran, I'm going to run the slides okay. in here. Is the second one Chat GPT? I don't know. Post in Slack and see. Get a I actually don't know the answers, BT. I'm really bad at emojis. <laughs> mm, I like, I'm also not sure I know any of these, but that's fine. I'm sure they, they're more clever than me. I'm going to drop off for a second. I'll be listening. So if there's more questions, whatever. Your teeth is fish. I think that's what he's saying. That too, but my teeth is killing me. I have to go to get some more painkillers. So. <laughs> okay. Yes. For Vendron, are you ready for me to hand over to you to tell us more about PayShop? Yes. Um, is it fine if I share? Yeah, absolutely. I would prefer that. So, okay, is everything up? Yeah. Yeah, we cool. can see. Perfect. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Pavendran, and I work for a local PSP. Um, and I'd still like to think I'm a developer, but I don't write code very often. Um, I run the the recon and and payouts teams uh, here, uh, so mostly just meetings, which isn't as fun. Um, and yeah, uh, today I'm going to cover PayShop, which launched uh, sort of mid March this year, um, and it's an entirely new payment rail. Um, but before I get to that, um, an important thing to cover is what's bank serve, um, because a lot of the stuff is um, developed and like sort of like owned by bank serve. Um, and it's effectively, you'll see this diagram on the side here, when a customer wants to buy something or transact with their digital money, um, it's through some bank. Um, and there's these funds that are like controlled at like a way higher level by the reserve bank. Uh, but like how these banks communicate between each other, between their networks, um, there needs to be the sort of like middle house. And, and that's a payment clearing um, house. Uh, and that's where bank serve comes in. And they're the primary um, like clearing agent for like South Africa and like they do quite a bit within Africa as well. Um, and we're pretty lucky that they're, they're pretty decent. Um, and one thing that I didn't know for a long time till I got into the payment space was that it's actually owned by banks. Um, for some reason, I assumed it was owned by the government, but it's not. Um, so you'll see here that um, APSA first uh, FNB, NetBank, Standard Bank own like the majority, and then the rest is split through a group with um, some other popular banks in South Africa. Um, and one of the main things that BankServe provides is standardized sort of communication between these uh, these separate networks, which are the banks, um, and products on top of that. Uh, so a very common one. Uh, is EFTs um, and debit orders. Uh, but in the case of EFTs, they realized that um, that piece of tech or that specific rail was lagging in terms of what they, their vision was for like sort of digital payments, um, because there's tons of like issues with, with EFTs. There's like banking windows. Um, there's no processing of EFTs on like Sundays and like some public holidays. And then even the, the current products within the EFT space um, didn't really meet the requirements of the user. Um, so there's things like for issuing of value, uh, there's a few different products. There's one day, two day, and same day value. Uh, but then more recently, they've introduced RTC, uh, which is real-time clearing. But even that has limitations in terms of like banking windows. Um, so what they decided to do was sort of rethink the entire sort of like offer in and like build from scratch uh, and that program was originally called rpp rapid payments program uh, and i think the idea originally was like put out in the public around 2017 and official kick off the project was around 2019 uh, and they launched march this year which i think is pretty decent um turnaround for like a brand new rail um and, and new products um uh, I was actually not that confident that they'd hit uh, their deadline, but they did. Uh, so props to them. And that new method is PayShop. 
Um, so they renamed from RPP because that's not very catchy. Um, and the entire goal of this new method um, or their target as well was high volume, low value um, and low value um, in the sense of currently there's a, a 3000 Rand transaction limit on it um, because they're aiming to sort of bridge the gap that currently still exists uh, for people still transacting in cash um, because of like how instant cash is. They, they're trying to find like sort of the, the digital sort of like match to that. Um, and one of the big things there as well was the sort of complication of like trying to pay peers, um, which we've covered here with Ricky before as well, is like giving people banking details, like account numbers are long and difficult to remember, there's branch codes and, and so on. Um, so it's just like not easy. So they decided to like look at it from like a grassroots level at the clearing house. Like they was like, let's come up with a product and like build this from scratch. Um, so they've introduced this concept of proxies. Um, so it identifies other than your bank account details. Um, so right now it's currently a cell phone number, but there's still room there for it to become other sort of identifiers. Um, you still need a bank account um, because the money needs to land somewhere, but this makes it a lot easier for you to sort of request and send money um, without sending that long sort of like WhatsApp message of like, I have requested money with my account number, branch, whatever, and so on. Um, so for phase one, uh, requesting money is not available just yet. Uh, you only can send money. Um, and it's been a limited launch on a, on a few banks uh, with more banks to come. Uh, I just want to move this here and oh, like that. And the biggest selling point here is that it's immediate. Because um, like I mentioned before, they built this from scratch. So they're not like relying on like old um, sort of legacy systems. Because a lot of what happens in banks have with mandate products and EFT as well is like there's a lot of like batch in and like fixed interval like cron jobs uh, that happen. Um, um, PayShop is built on, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's an instant clearing system. Um, so as you make the payment, uh, it clears the values allocated immediately. And yeah, uh, one other thing is that there's a bunch of participating banks. This These logos are pretty out of date or actually I saw an update more recently originally Capitec wasn't on here um, and that was like a big miss like personally I think uh, considering like the large user base that Capitec has uh, but they've recently joined um, and obviously a familiar bank on the Investec as well uh, I don't know if Wayne can tell us when pay shops come into to Investec uh, and yeah that's about it um, the idea is again they they're going for high volume low value um, and it's sort of an entry point into sort of a new space for South Africa and digital payments where we're no longer like held ransom by like settlement windows between banks um, because one thing to, to mention is that this is actually pretty common elsewhere. Um, Brazil has a very similar thing that they launched a few years called PIX. Uh, Nigeria as well has instant value or instant credit notification. And this is like built in uh, to, to their clearing houses. And it's been like that for a while. Um, so I'm excited to see that South Africa is catching up and we're working on this. And that's it. A shop in 10 minutes or less. Thanks. That was super interesting. I also only recently learned about BankServ and was quite fascinated to, to understand how it all works. Does anyone have any questions for Vendron? Yes. Do you know uh, if PetShop has uh, as like some kind of external API access or uh, is it only something that so we just can it. interact with? So th there's no as far as I know, there's no concrete information in it, but there, it, there are plans for it to be exposed to, I think it's businesses first. Um, so like other like PSPs and like payment providers um, in general, but there are companies currently thinking about wrapping um, BankServe as a whole and providing a consumer API. Uh, 
to what level and to who, I don't know. Um, because yeah, these these projects are still sort of like under wraps and like they're probably years away. Um, like I don't think you'll see any of these within the year. Um, but probably to businesses first. Sorry, stitch on the list, Pavendran. Uh, I can't comment. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for Viv? Uh, I've got a question. Is Altec uh, one of your payment, um, on one of your slides, you've used a word there, which is like a transporter. The previous one, I think was slide four. You call it payment clearing houses. Altec yes. one of those, or are you becoming one of those? Uh, you're asking me personally and the company I work for? The company. Or this process? Um, no. So, so personally, the company I work for, we're just uh, a payment service provider. So we'll always build on top of this infrastructure. Um, but I do think uh, to an extent, Bidvest is also a clear in-house um, because they clear a lot of international funds. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really know all the details of like the, the other smaller players. Bank service is the biggest player. Yeah, BankServe um, was created to, I think, facilitate SaaSwitch. Um, so SaaSwitch is, is is one of their products, actually. Um, and like I kind of passed over it here, um, is their bank, BankServe is sort of like this consortium that's um, trying to like make the lives easier for like banks and moving money between. Um, and then I guess they kind of realized that like, each bank had their own ATMs and then they were like converting things and then like moving stuff between. They were like, oh, we've also got the infrastructure and expertise for this. Um, so then they came out with like SaaS switch, which is like sort of generic ATM um, ATMs um, that interact with this entire sort of like system. Uh, but yeah, it's, they it's like a backbone um, common yeah. uh, sharing language. Yeah. Um, and, and what's interesting is that, um, sort of like this current landscape with like EFTs mandates and so on, um, they, they were certain areas that like, we sort of deviated from like worldwide trends. Um, but we've kind of sort of like come back and, and like, sort of like adjusted to sort of world trends with, with pay shop and like the rapid payments program where all of this well, actually, for the most part, this is following um, like the ISO standards. There's ISO uh, 222, which is sort of like just this financial payments standard um, and PayShop falls within that, that realm. Who pleases the ISO standard? Like no. who sets it? And... That's another group. I, I, I don't know much about oh, how I ISO standards are, are created. ISO yeah. standards are pleased by a UN group. Okay. okay. Johan, you had a question? Yeah, just to answer the question on the clearing systems, um, there's basically clearing banks and there's a single clearing system which is owned by the Reserve Bank. So, yeah, um, the, the, the clearing banks um, are basically the top ones, but um, they also basically fit on top of the national clearing system if you can call it that okay so it's not multiple companies that do clearing it's actually the reserve banks the system's name is uh Praso, Praso, or something like that samos sorry samos that's the clearing system for south africa yeah anyway also plays a, a, a regulatory role and, and that's as far as I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Prasa. Samos. Samos is the is the actual system doing the clearing. Yeah, more complicated than I ever imagined. Um, the Prasa actually has two um, two sixteen week courses explaining all of this, uh, which is very dense and very boring, to be yeah. honest. Did you do them? <laughs> I, I haven't completed either one yet, but but I am in the process of doing them. Okay. I don't know if we'll invite you back for a talk on that. 
Anybody else have any questions for Piv? Okay, then we'll I'll switch back to controlling. I, I missed all of that. Can you start again? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll send you the recording after, Wayne. <laughs> uh, the, the summary, Wayne, is we, we wanted to know when uh, Investex get in pay shop. Uh, we're on that second tier list, so it, they are working on it, definitely. Okay. But it's first the big banks, and then I think it's us after that. Okay, I am going to take you guys through our community updates. So the first thing is, obviously, we run these meetups for you guys. Um, we want to make sure it's valuable for you and that we are able to give you something that is worthwhile. So we'd love your feedback. Uh, so you can tell us how we can improve on the meetups. Um, we're always open to any feedback on how we can improve on anything. So if you encounter something you don't like or you think that we could be doing something better, uh, Nick and I and Shanna and Dominic are just a slack away. Um, but Nick is going to share a link now to the feedback form. And if you can tell us how tonight went and how we could improve on it, we'd really appreciate it so we can make it better for you guys. Um, and then I know Nick always has some swag available for people giving feedback. There's always hidden swag, so it could be you tonight. Um, and then also just to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing um, Wayne alluded to it earlier that we're running a mission at the moment around improving the developer community um, experience. Um, so we've been focused a lot at the moment on creating sample apps and we're trying to eventually have a sample app for every different functionality. So um, there are quite a lot that have been created. So you can follow the link in the slides that we shared later and have a look at what we've done. Um, and then we've also been working on some quick start guides. So um, Shanna and Dominic have created a specifically a we released the program banking api one but now they're also released really the card one so take a look and also again if you have any feedback if you find any issues or anything let us know and we are always wanting to make things better and then finally we are going to be sharing a next bounty challenge for this quarter so nick is working on something that he's going to be sharing next week with you guys so keep your eyes open is that a mid-journey one nick yours ever yeah that's not yeah Zebra. I'm not sure that Zebra is on brand. Thank you. We must just check with our. I mean, well, it's just, just a Zebra. <laughs> just a zebra. We, don't have, we don't have apples here at most places. Yeah, it's sad. And it's not investic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, at least, you know, they, they never show apples with evil people in movies. So at least you got that one. So we're the good guys. I'm going to like it. We'll work on our brand better for next time, Wayne. Yeah, as long as not a Samsung. Um, and then also just to let you know, our next meetup, our meetups are generally, this is an anomaly because of the public holiday. They're generally the third, the last Thursday of the month. Um, so our next meetup will be the last Thursday of May. And we for our second meetup of the quarter, we always like to focus on some fun ideation and brainstorming as a team. So look out for the invitations and some more info about that. And then Thank you very much. That's the end of our formal agenda. But if you guys want to stick around and chat anymore, we'll be here. Um, otherwise, that's a wrap. And thank you everyone for coming tonight. And also thanks to the people who did demos for us, especially a live demo for Key. Um, I always love a live demo. <laughs> um, and thanks also Piv, for coming and explaining a little bit more to us about PayShop. And Wayne, thanks for going through the roadmap. I get the boring job. I get all the cool stuff. I mean, you can also come and tell us. I'll work with you to come up with a cool topic around what you can teach us. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some cool thing. Otherwise, I'm like that guy that always just says the stupid, boring things. And tells us that you're not delivering virtual yeah, content. I can tell you what you're not getting. That's my job. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I like Fricky's thing. I see the Fricky, right? Um, is Postnap the Fricky killer thing? Fricky, is that going to kill your app? Um, I hope not. I've, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm hoping you'll add uh, Pay Shop to the roadmap so that I can integrate with it. So. I'm sure we will, definitely. Yeah. Then it's uh, then you can save a business. Ricky, how much time are you actually managing to dedicate to this? Because you have a real, you have another job, right? Yeah, I have a real, I have a real job. <laughs> um, um, not too much to be honest. So I. Uh, 
I think I started this in February-ish where, uh, where I spent a couple of hours after work building it. Um, and yeah, right now, right now there's not a lot of development going on. Maybe this weekend I'll, I'll build the app. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really just uh, really getting to it after work and, uh, and before work. But there was also this nice Goldilocks zone where, because um, my my employer is in, in is in Europe, so they had um, winter time, so South Africa was an hour ahead. So I I caught a couple of hours in the morning where I was able to to get a lot of stuff done. Um, but now now we're all caught up, so that uh, that luxury is gone. I can tell you probably also don't have children because people with children struggle <laughs> to have to build things. Up. No, only uh, only two dogs. I don't know if that counts, but uh, not as uh, not as much uh, time consuming. Okay. Is this the first thing like you that you built out, Ricky, or do you have a few under the belt? No, I love building stuff, so I've I've built a couple of stuff. I've uh, previously built the game, built a like social media thingy as well, which didn't really. Which I didn't really like, but uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, I just like building stuff. So this this was really like stemmed from playing around with Southgate, um, and then uh, realizing that also. So I used to live in the Netherlands, and they use Tiki quite a lot there, which is essentially like Venmo, and like everywhere you go, I, I think it's also like the Dutch culture. People like to split payments. Um, so everywhere you go, you just like everyone's just like, yeah, I'll send you a Tiki link afterwards, um, and I. Yeah, we were missing it, so uh, decided to realize that this is maybe a nice opportunity to build that as well. That's cool. Thank you. I'm gonna go. Bye bye. Bye, bye Wayne. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank Cheers, you. Wayne. Uh, good luck with your teeth. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All of you too. Uh, at least the fish else. is soft that it is yeah, like exactly. frozen food i just needed to go and puree it or put it through a blender <laughs> what's wrong with your teeth man huh what's wrong with your teeth i had the two fake teeth you know like cups or whatever they call it but the bone was getting like so bad and they kept on falling out and then any would laugh at me every time i'd be like chewing and my teeth would just come out so I went back and they said, no, it's not really enough bone for that. So they're going to put in screws and then put in like hardcore teeth, not with super glue, with like screws. No. But to do it's that, they need to remove mouse. the two back teeth. So that was where I am now. And I think it's infected. It's just horrible. Yeah. Okay. Public service announcement to look after your teeth. <laughs> yes, I should have recorded it. We, you had the lady hold my head like it's against the chair, and the other ones on top of me trying to get the teeth out with pliers and stuff. So it's quite a, a scene. <laughs> on that note, I think I'm going to go brush my teeth now. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cheers. Well, cheers. Thank, Thank you so much for the cheers, opportunity. Guys. Thank you, Pookie. Just, uh, I recommend Sensodyne uh, toothpaste. <laughs> I already use Sensodyne. I'm going to buy more. Puzzles. All right, guys. Enjoy your evening, whatever mischief you get up to or you don't get up to. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Jason. Jason. Crazy yeah. mischief times. Thanks for coming <laughs> back, Barry. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure. I'll, I'll be less quiet next time. <laughs> Soon it's going to be you doing a live demo for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm keen. I just don't have anything to demo yet. Give me some months. <laughs> what do you need? Yeah, what do you need? Uh, I need to spend more time. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm getting married in June. So it's probably going to be after that. Uh, <laughs> right now, it's just all wedding planning. <laughs> when you need like a relief from wedding planning, your head didn't hate anything more than planning a wedding. It's my worst. Like you need to. Yeah, fun. yeah. Well, no, that's how my fiance feels. Uh, so now I'm doing most of it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah no it's all good uh what like just under seven weeks to go then sure. yeah then i'll be back uh doing well, well i'm doing things on the side for fun like i'm getting very tied in with yeah work projects but yeah <laughs> sweet
Well, after you're married, we'll have a project ready for you. Awesome. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Prepare for something for end of June. <laughs> Okay, peeps. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, drop off. Yeah. Yeah. Love you, Have a good one, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Just thanks. Cheers. 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 Uh -huh. Cheers. Cheers.